little on the sketchy side. Okay, it's a lot on the sketchy side, but it's only gonna be that way temporarily. Hey everyone, and welcome back. We are back on this old crusty heap again. This is my 1958 press bumper panel bust named Pickle. What we're gonna work on today is the points that actually mount to my rotisserie. Uh, so I've taken the liberty of sparing you me beating out the spring plates and the torsion bar. And the other one is out as well, so we should be able to see through this tunnel. Here we go. It looks like it's in pretty good shape inside there, uh, surprisingly. So the rear rotisserie ring will mount there. I mentioned this in the previous video, but the front rotisserie ring will mount here. So basically what I need to do is just make some paper dolls of these areas and get my steel plates cut for that. And then we'll come straight out at a 90 out and then I will bring the rings over to it and set up my, my cutoff point from there. So I think today probably the only thing we're gonna be able to get done time-wise is getting the paper dolls made and getting those traced and cut. So let me get some things set up and I'll turn you back on. Hopefully you can see okay there. Just gonna take a piece of, just got a piece of paper and I'm just gonna go around that guy. Make her pattern. There's an advantage to kind of leaving yourself grubby, I guess. We don't have to cut out that arch. We can just make it a straight piece. Hopefully, be able to see where that is. And then uh, I'll cut it out and we'll make sure the other side I'm pretty sure is the same, not the inverse, but we'll double check. So there's our pattern for that one. The back one's easy. We just got to take that spring plate cover over and we got a pattern already. So I brought those two cap, those covers in, and I think I'm going to use the one that was on the driver's side. It's a little, uh, little better condition. And I did go ahead and just make a paper doll of it off of the bus, directly off the bus, just to make sure. And then we've got our front one made here. So we've got our patterns. And obviously, I'm just going to make this go straight across. I'm not going to worry about arching that out any. And this one will just be straight across. So let me get a couple patterns made and we'll get some metal cut. Just hitting it with the wire wheel. <laughs> nice, huh? But it got us our pattern. I've got two of those cut. They're sitting here. And then I have the front ones, the front beam ones cut. Uh, who was screaming at me when I was making the paper doll? Should only have four bolts. And I should have known that because I'm the one that took it out. I boo-booed on one of them and it has six holes. We won't need two of those. There are two spots on the frame there but they're not threaded. So on the second one, I did it the right way. So those four places where it will bolt up are cut. Wish I'd have had a little more uh, metal right there. But when you look at these, there's not a whole lot on the edge there. Should have, uh, wish I'd have had a little bit wider piece to work with, but building it all out of scrap, out of the scrap pile down there. So those four are done. Kind of a nice day outside. So I'm hoping to be able to get my rings kind of to a finished up point today. I need to move the beetle out of my way. And I broke off one of the spring plate bolts. So I've got to get that out of there before I can put my little templates back on there. So let me go get a some kind of pick or something and we'll try to get some of that rust off of there. Maybe put a, a wire wheel on the uh, battery operated drill. We'll get some of that off. We'll put some free all on the back side because we can get to this on the back side and we'll put some here and we'll try and work that back and forth. We may have to heat it, get it out. So I've got to get that out of there before we get 
any further on the project and get this guy, or this gal, shall I say, out of my way. Put a little heat on that guy and a little oil in there. I've got some movement now. It's not wanting to come out. I'm just gonna keep working it back and forth. A little free all in there. We'll get it eventually. Keep working that and I'll bring you back. I think we're about to get it now. Uh, I have bought, dad bought me some new hardened bolts for that. Look too bad. And I think I'll go uh, put some never sees on one of them and just broop, broop, run it in and out of each of these so that we've kind of cleaned up those threads a little bit. They don't look too bad. Not terrible. But I want to clean them up before I put anything into them. So let me go take care of that. I will save you uh, that camera action. And I may take a wire wheel and just kind of clean some of this up too. I took a wire wheel to that. Cleaned up. Okay. I'll eventually oil all of that down or fluid film it or do something to it before we put it all back together. But for right now, I'm going to go with that. It doesn't look terrible. Well, I mean, it looks terrible, but I can deal with it. And then I have, uh, these are 10 nines. I don't know if you can see that or not. Hardened steel. And they have a, they're a little bit different size head. The original ones, I think, were 17s. These are 15s, but they've got that little flare on it. So they should work uh, for the bus when I actually go to put it together. They should be fine to use for those little uh, spring plate dust covers as well. And uh, the hole, when I drilled them, I was off a little bit, so I had to make them a little bit bigger than I would have liked to, but it is what it is. I'm not going to remake them. And eventually I will paint everything, because if I don't, it'll all rust. But we're going to have this off and on a few times before we're ready to call it permanent, so I am certain I'll get the opportunity to paint those later. All right, both of those are on. I don't think that's going to slap around any, so we should be fine. And we'll do the same song and dance up here in the front. Uh, starting them by by hand and then hitting them with the the drill. That one's actually moving real easy. So I've got those done. You can grab up here and get a plate. If you remember, I boo booed one of them. I made six holes instead of four. Give me just a second here. And because I'll have somebody probably ask what I'm using. Whoa. Bleaching you out there. I am using, I call it Never Seize, but it's Anti Seize Lubricant made by Permatex. I normally just take the, take the bolt that I'm treating and just dunk it in there, but I'm almost out. So I'm actually scraping the sides of my container to get anything out of there. Trying to buy a new one, that's for sure. Because I'm not putting up with rusty bolts after I'm done with it. I'm going to make sure every bolt on this bus that needs to come off at any point is treated. And a couple extra holes for good measure, I guess. There we go. Now she's on. All right, go do the other side. All right, so those are all four on there. I am going to set the chop saw up with a steel blade on it. And I have this scrap steel kicking around. Pretty thick walled stuff. Get the camera to focus on it. So I'm gonna use that for the brackets that come out to attach to the ring. And I've got 
And it goes all the way down there to the end of the double cab right there. And I've got a couple pieces of this uh, narrower stuff. So I am going to cut that, I believe, in 28 inch sections, 28 inch pieces, because we've got to come out of the front. The Let me get back to the back of the bus so I can talk without having to step around stuff. Just trying to figure out the distance and spacing and all of that before I go cutting anything. And I am about from the bottom of the ring up to the... Maggie, Maggie, get over here. You bumped that and put a dent in my bus, and I'm not going to be a happy camper. This bus is just near perfect. Got it? The gap here is about 16 and a half inches, and the gap up top from the top of the bus up to the top of the ring, ignore that. Uh, I've got a, there's a roof rack system on the top of there. Get up here. It looks further, but the gap from here to here is about 17 inches. So I think we're pretty close. It's funny because it looks like there's way more space here than there is down here, but there isn't. And the bus is five foot wide or roughly five foot wide, which leaves me in a foot and a half out to the ring at the widest point. But we're coming in down here a little ways, so I'm actually uh, coming into the bus about a foot. So I've got, I need to cut it probably, I think I'm gonna go stick with my 28 inch original thought on that. I don't know why we're having trouble focusing. I've gotta cut some, cut some pieces. I can feel it now, I can feel it. can't really get back far enough because we got the big truck parked in the way so I can't back up far enough to for you to see it at a straight angle but I've got the arms coming out off of the spring plate cap area to my ring and I'm just gonna take a pencil or a marker and mark that angle there I've measured from uh, inside out to where it first touches the ring and we are dead center. Uh, the bus is going to be heavier down here so it's always going to kind of want to right itself that way. Um, I don't want to go up much higher than that because we're going to gain a little height once we put it up on the, the rollers. It's probably not going to be perfectly balanced where it will sit at any one position. It's always going to want to kind of right itself to the way it is. I could go up maybe a little bit higher, but I think we're pretty good. I may go uh, inside real quick and look on a couple of pictures of ones I've seen and see kind of what they do. It's really tippy right now. I've got a, a jack inside with the board going this way and the two jack stands I had to move forward because I had to get access to where on that uh, tunnel, that tube where they were. So I had to move them. A little on the sketchy side. Okay, it's a lot on the sketchy side, but it's only going to be that way temporarily. So we're about as dead center as we can get at this point. And I think I'm going to call that good. The front, I don't have the bars coming out but the car is sitting I'm panting because I've been crawling under the thing it's sitting uh, pretty level if I go off of the the divot on the bus I mean I can live with that 
that's pretty close. And then along the side, we're in pretty similar condition here. If I go along, I can live with that. So using the bus itself, the upper part of the bus as a level, we're sitting about as level as we can be, side to side and front to back. Well, sadly, evening is upon us, but I feel like I made pretty good progress today. Really getting excited about this. I have gone in and marked my angle that I need to cut my piece at. So that is ready to get off of the bus and get cut. And I've marked the other side as well. I also have jacked the bus up another two inches, so our gap here is greater than our gap up top. I know it doesn't look like it, but I measured it. So our distance from the bottom of the bus to the bottom of the ring is greater slightly than it is from the top. So what that should allow us to do is kind of uh, make the center of gravity more, more to the center so that when I go to flip it, I won't have to pull quite as hard to get that weight up past uh, the, the midpoint. I could start cribbing under the jacks and going from there. Problem with that is I'm getting to the point now where it's getting really sketchy. Uh, I don't want to dump this thing and I don't want my kid under it. So I'm just trying to do my best to make it safe and make it where it can flip, even if it's not super, super easy to turn over. I don't mind putting a little muscle behind it to get it to flip over. But because it is so sketchy, I am going to leave those C-clamps and that ring on there. keeps it from going side to side. I do have jack stands around all four corners. So if it does decide to leak off of those hydraulic jacks, we do have something to catch it. I don't want to come out in the morning and find it sitting on its side. Or, God forbid, sitting and smash into the front of my double cab. Or, or into the rover, for that matter. I don't know if I'll end the video here or pick up with some more stuff, but I will uh, catch you on the next one. Whether that's the next one right away or the next one next week. Thanks, everyone. I did switch that out for the inch and a half steel. So now those two are the same. And I think I'm going to go with one ring. And I'm going to gusset. So I'm going to go along and we'll put a gusset every so often. But I think, I think I'm going to chance it. I might regret that, but... Just thought I'd give you a couple of quick updates on some of the things that we found in Old Pickle, cleaning them out. Uh, the shoe is in there, and it is the right shoe. I had a YouTuber suggest that this needs to be the accelerator, and I couldn't agree more. I will come up with some way to incorporate that into the accelerator pedal, because I think that is exactly what that needs to be. Then the vice grips that were stuck on the clutch, I have wiggled them enough to get the little piece of clutch cable out of there. And uh, I think they're getting close to coming, kind of coming loose a little bit. I actually have uh, the adjusting screw where it will actually move now. And Slade's VW Beetle, I'll put a link right here to his channel, suggested that you mix uh, acetone and brake fluid. So that is what we did. And you can see some of the rust that's been coming off of that. And I've just been letting these kind of sit like this in the container and then I've been pouring that mixture in and just kind of letting it sit it lays in this little trough right here and I think we might have these to the point where they'll come apart you can see there it uh, shot out quite a bit of the rust so I'm gonna try while I've got the camera on and that was just too easy wasn't it <laughs> so I've got them to move that much and they've been soaking for a couple days so I had them for probably about I don't know probably four or five days just soaking upright stuck down in a container like that and just let them sit there and then after they had soaked that way a couple days I'd come flip them the opposite direction and soak them like that so once I got the little clutch piece out of there it was easier to soak them they're almost loose so, Slade's VW for the win. Obviously, you don't want to get that on your paint. 
because uh, brake fluid will eat through paint on a car. They're still not, the spring is broke up here it looks like, or it's come undone, but they are loose. <laughs> this part, the jaw isn't moving yet. So we'll keep working on them. I'll keep uh, loose, trying to get them oiled up and loosened up. And we'll come up with something we're going to do uh, in the bus for that. I'm open to suggestions if anybody has uh, any suggestions. Uh, interior door handle. I don't know. I have all the door handles and things like that uh, for the bus. But it, it has to be something. So put down below in the comments what you think I should do with them. And uh, the shoe is already taken. 